What's going on everybody? It is your man Cliff and Terry. Today we're going to be talking about OBS and Twitch. Specifically, how to get up and running with OBS and how to use Twitch. But for the most part, it's going to be an OBS related video because that's the basics that get you to Twitch. Everything else is kind of icing on top of the cake. So we're going to talk about OBS specifically. Now, you can use pretty much any program you want. But in this case, the only two programs that are really gonna make the most sense is OBS and Streamlabs OBS, because basically they are the same. Couple of things just to throw out there right from the beginning. Uh, I'm a Mac guy, so even though this is going to be based upon a Mac computer, the same things apply to PCs. Matter of fact, OBS and Streamlabs first worked on PC. We just got ported over to Mac just a few months ago. So anything that I do on the Mac, you're going to be able to do in OBS on the PC side. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna to go to the OBS website to download the app. Again, Streamlabs, same thing. Couple of caveats right off the bat. Windows, I don't see any restrictions, but with Mac, uh, anything before High Sierra, it won't work. It won't work. There was an app just about two months ago that worked with Yosemite and, and Sierra that I actually had and it worked just fine. And then I went to upgrade to the new software. It loaded, but when I opened it up, it would just crash immediately. So make sure that you have high Sierra or above before you try to install this. There are two questions that people always ask right off the bat. One, which program is better, Streamlabs or regular OBS? And two, should I use a Mac or a PC? So let's answer the second question first. Should you use a Mac or a PC? Well, the simple answer is use what you have available to you. For me, the only thing I have is an older 2012 MacBook Pro Retina and then my new eight core Mac Pro. So that's what I use. Historically speaking, the PC works much better for OBS. Does the Mac run fine? Yes. For what I'm gonna tell you, will the Mac run? Of course. And then the other question is, which one works better, Streamlabs, OBS or OBS. Now, I'm going to say I started with OBS and OBS has been really, really stable for me. When Streamlabs ported over to Mac, it was very, very glitchy and I just didn't trust it. Not that it crashed while I was streaming, but in the middle of like editing the, the, the program or moving a layer, it would just crash on me. So that scared me a little bit. Uh, I will tell you this, there have been updates since their original port and it does seem to be more stable, but I've just been in OBS, so I figure why change? Now, the difference between an OBS and a Streamlabs is, uh, Streamlabs is OBS, but then it adds on a layer of uh, community access. So the community add-ons are what separate Streamlabs from OBS, which make it more of a Twitch-focused platform. So if you wanna use Streamlabs, and cut out the middleman to be able to use all of their community add-ons, then go ahead and do it. But just know that for anything that's in Streamlabs, you can use an OBS. If you know you're gonna be doing Twitch only and you just wanna use all of their integrated things, then Streamlabs is the one for you. If you're gonna be doing other things outside of Twitch, um, I think the platform is a little more stable using OBS. All right, let's go into OBS now. Let's take a look. Here is your default layout for your OBS screen. It starts out black, uh, it has your scene box, your sources box, your audio mixer, your scene transitions, and then your additional controls right here. The first thing we're gonna look at is your scene panel. Now your scenes panel is basically, think of it like your canvas. It starts out with nothing and then you decide what to put on it. And you can put on as much as you want. It's just like painting a picture. You decide what you wanna do via the sources. You can have as many scenes as you want, literally as many scenes as you want, but from a beginner perspective, you only need one scene, okay? One scene will get you through all of the necessary things to get Twitch to work. Why would you use more than one scene? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, one would be if you wanna change elements in your screen. If you want to change the backdrop or you want to change the way the layout is, let's say you have more than one camera and you have one camera shooting at your DJ booth and you have another camera shooting at you. And now you want to switch it to where the focus is on the DJ booth and 
less on you. Well, you would require a different scene in order to make that happen. Let's move over to your sources. Now your sources are your assets. They're the things that are going to be placed on your canvas, your scene screen, to get it to do the things you want it to do. So from a basic level, you need what? A camera, uh, an audio source, and that's it. That's all you really need to get started. You have many different options for any type of camera source. So you have your webcam on your computer, you have dedicated video cards, you have dedicated webcams that are external. But if you don't have any of those, if you're rocking with the laptop, you have at least a laptop cam built into your computer. At a minimum, we're going to work off of that. First thing we wanna do is we want to hit the plus icon on sources. Now, all of these options become available to you. Your audio input capture, that is going to be your sound card. Audio output capture, don't worry about. Your browser, don't worry about right now. Color source, don't worry about. Display capture, don't worry about. So we're gonna skip all the stuff that you don't need at the moment. The most important thing you need is your audio input capture and your video capture device. Everything else we'll talk about later, but these are basics right now. Let's go to your video capture device, hit the video capture. You can name it whatever you want. In this case, we're gonna call this uh, Mac Webcam. And we're gonna say, okay. So we're gonna hit the drop down and we're gonna choose this FaceTime HD camera. Again, it's the only camera that we have available to us. So we're gonna hit that. It's automatically going to connect. And then there you go. So now we got the camera. Um, we're gonna keep the preset the way it is because this is the maximum resolution of this particular camera because it's a Mac Webcam and they suck. Uh, let's go hit okay, and now we're good. So we have the basic camera in here. Now, again, you don't need to have a different camera if you really don't want to. I mean, if you have enough light, the webcam will be decent. And you can set this up on a chair or whatever and just back it up from your turntables or your controller and you will have a dedicated camera without having to spend any extra money. You will also need some type of audio device. Uh, at a basic level, you can use your microphone that's built into your computer, but that's gonna sound like crap and we don't want that. Sound is far more important when you're DJing or doing anything than the video is. The video can be basic, but if the sound is bad, uh, people are gonna let you know it, okay? So we really wanna focus on sound. Now, if you have any type of mixer that is a DJ mixer, for the most part, you have options. So from an audio perspective, you can use like some sort of a audio card like this inbox here, the focus rights. If your mixer supports it, you can go directly into your computer via USB and the mixer will see the sound card. We talked about that in my Instagram OBS video, so take a look there if you wanted. But for the most part, all you're typically doing is plugging it in to the USB, your computer should see it. Now, where you run into trouble is certain mixers uh, will show you the tone sound and there's a way to get around that, okay? And I have another video that will show you how to get around that, for instance, if you're using the S9. Now, if you don't wanna deal with any of that stuff, okay, because there is a lot of little things that can totally stop you, and you are using a Mac, there are many, many options to be able to avoid that. Now, I use a Rain 70, I also have an S9. Now, when I plugged in my Rain 70 into my OBS, it wasn't playing correctly. And the way to fix that was I had to change my audio channels to a 7.1 surround sound to get it to work, but it didn't sound quite like the way I wanted to. Then a little app called SpinStream came out and for $20, it allowed me to use my standard mixer without the need for any kind of trickery to get it to work. Okay, so SpinStream for $20 for Mac, Loopback, you can also do, it's $100, SpinStream's cheaper, and it does the same job, so I'm fine with that. So let's see if anything pops up here. Oh, we're gonna call this SpinStream, because Black Hole is here. All right, now, when I go to SpinStream, there it is. I just connect Black Hole right here, and then we're done. Now, we have our audio and we have our video, the basics of getting on to broadcast yourself. In your audio mixer, this is where your volume is gonna come from. So any type of volume is gonna show in here. Now you can adjust the volume right from here, or you can adjust it from your mixer. 
it's pretty straightforward. Now, once you have this stuff done, it's time to start streaming. But before we do that, we need to go in here and check some settings. Your control panel has a couple of options. Start streaming, start recording, studio mode, settings and exit. Start streaming is exactly what it is. You hit that button, you're streaming live. Start recording is if you don't wanna stream live, but you do wanna record whatever you're doing and maybe post that live later on, it's a great little feature. I will tell you this, do not stream and record at the same time unless you know exactly what type of computer you have. Because if you're talking about stealing resources, recording while you stream is the easiest way to steal resources and it's going to end up affecting your stream. It's gonna get blocky, it's gonna get choppy. It's not gonna be a good thing. So I don't recommend streaming and recording at the same time unless you have like a serious, serious computer. Okay, good. Now, studio mode, that's not a beginner thing, that's more intermediate. Essentially, it allows you to change things on your screen without affecting the real time stream that people are seeing. So you can add some text in here and then transition over and then it'll slowly just move that text over, but it's not like you're dragging and dropping and people are seeing you type and misspell and move things around. So studio mode is a good thing, but not a deal breaker if you don't know how to use it. Okay, so let's move over to settings. Now in the settings, the general, doesn't matter, skip it, doesn't give you anything informative besides the fact if you wanna change your theme colors. Now go to stream. In order to get on Twitch, you need a little thing called a stream key. So what is a stream key? Think of it like your access code to broadcast. It's your key to open the door, okay? So every system, every system that uses OBS needs, requires a broadcast key. Some of them just allow you to log on and then you log on and it takes the key for you. But in this case, Twitch uh, requires you to get the stream keys. Now we're using Twitch today, but the same thing applies to any OBS related community. So that means your mixed clouds, your Facebooks, your mixer, well, it was mixer. Uh, but today we're talking about Twitch. So make sure, I can't believe I'm telling you this, but make sure you have a Twitch account. You, you do have a Twitch account, right? because we can't go any, any, any farther until you have a Twitch account. So pause it and go get yourself your Twitch account, twitch.tv. I'll wait. Since you have your Twitch account ready, the only thing you have to do is click on get your stream key out of here. So once you click on this, it's going to open up automatically. And if you're logged into Twitch, it's gonna bring up your stream key. All you have to do is hit copy and then go back to your streaming software and then paste it into the stream. That's it. Now, one caveat or one thing to know is if you're going on temporarily, like say for instance, this is your first time on Twitch and you're performing on somebody else's channel, which does happen and they've emailed you kind of a temporary stream key. In that case, you're gonna take the stream key from the email you got and you're just gonna paste it into here, okay? Straightforward. All right, now, before you hit okay, let's go to output. The output mode, you can keep it simple. The video bit rate, I have mine set to 2,500 KBS. Now, anything to, in my opinion, 2,500 and less is fine. I've seen people go all the way down to like 1,200. 2,500 for me seems to be a nice, kind of easy bit rate. It just seems to work. The videos are really, really good and it's not, too much of a resource hog on my computer. And this is on a quad core MacBook Pro uh, Retina 15. If you don't have a quad core, or maybe your computer struggles a little more, drop that video bit rate down. Don't worry about the encoder, keep it the same way, move down to audio bit rate. Audio bit rate, you have all of these options. I think it defaults to like 96. I prefer to have mine at about 192 because I really put a focus on audio quality, but just keep in mind that you can drop all the way down to 128. I wouldn't go lower than 128, 160. I think you're fine no matter what. It's using an AAC encoder anyway, so it's going to be a really small file. So don't worry about it. But if your computer can take it, nothing wrong with going all the way up to 192. Let's move down to your audio. Audio, nothing changes here. You can keep this the same for now. So let's shut down the video. Now, your base canvas and your output should be the same. I and posting at 720p, this 1280 by 720. Now, there are some people that'll tell you, 
go up to 1080p, go to 60 frames per second. You can do all those things, but it is contingent on the fact that you have a very good computer. The more you add, the higher the resolution, the more frames per second, the more stress your computer is going to be under. So I recommend outputting to 720p. There's nothing wrong with 720p. The visuals are fine. I haven't had any issue with it. If your visuals don't look good, it's not 720p, it's your camera. So invest in a better camera if you want your visuals to look better. But essentially, keep in mind that a lot of other broadcast systems out there like your Facebooks, they still have a top level of 720p. You might be trying to go out at 1080, 60, the platform you're using can't even utilize it. So it's like putting a Blu-ray player into a old tube TV. You're not gonna see the benefits. And even if you are broadcasting to say your TV screen, 720p is fine. But for the most part, everybody's using these. They're using their phones, they're using their iPads, they're using their computers. So the resolution wise, 720p is fine. You're not gonna have any issues. So, so don't get into the, the tech uh, nonsense. Now, don't get me wrong, 1080p does look better. You know, if you look at Mojack's progress, his 1080p is amazing, but He's also using an A10 Mini Pro, which is a dedicated stream engine with its own processor in the device. So even if he was broadcasting to his computer, his computer is barely being used. So if you want to go that route, fine. All bets are off. But if you're not, and you're using your computer, make sure your computer can handle it. Speaking of computers, I know I talked about this in my other video, but I'm going to bring it up again. It is suggested, it is my recommendation that you use two computers, one to stream, one to DJ. They should not be one in the same. If they're one in the same, you're going to have to make sure that you follow all the basics that I'm talking about here because the basics are gonna save your computer. But as soon as you start adding in secondary cameras and stream labs, add-ons and moving visuals, that computer is going to die. So. And having a dedicated computer that you don't have to think about that's just for that works. Okay, let's finish off the list here. You got your hotkeys, don't matter. And the advanced is the advanced, not you. So once we hit okay, we are ready to start streaming. And it's essentially that. The moment you hit start streaming, then uh, you're gonna be online. You're going to be online. So that's it. And when you're done, hit stop streaming. You're done. That's all you gotta do, easy. Uh, hopefully I was able to get through the major big points of this. We are going to talk about uh, higher levels of learning from Twitch and OBS in the next video. This is the beginner's video. But we are going to do an intermediate video probably right after I stop this video, we're gonna make another one. All right guys? All right, if you found what I said it useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said it really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters right here. And as always, it's always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.